let's focus our attention on what is labeled the grant tables or the sets of tables, a set of tables that is, that constitutes the access control system used by MySQL. There is one main database that must exist and it is suggested by the authors of MySQL that you don't change or interfere with and that's the MySQL database. Let's exit the shell entirely and reconnect to the MySQL database as root where we'll be outside of the context of the MySQL database. Let's reauthenticate and then we'll execute a select current underscore user which should be in our history and it tells us that we're logged in as root which means that we should be able to interact with any database within the system which now means we can execute a show databases and you'll see that there are three databases set up the information schema MySQL and test it is also suggested that you drop the test database but we'll leave it for now so that we can illustrate connecting as a non-privileged user but it is suggested that you drop it because databases such as tests serve as access vectors for malicious users. Since they know that it exists, they look for ways to exploit any of the predefined rows, relationships, columns, and the like. If you're logged in as a privileged user, not necessarily root, but one who can interact with the MySQL database, you'll see the database. And by virtue of seeing the database means you can, for the most part, select data from it. So by if you're able to see the database, you should be able to select data from it, which means you'll also be able to use the database. So the very fact that executing a show databases shows three databases means you can actually interact with those three databases, which tells you a little something about MySQL's permissions. Select is a crucial privilege which is granted of course to the root user and if you see it that means you can access it doesn't mean you can update it or change it but you can at least see it in order to use a database in the terminal monitor you have two options you can either execute use followed by the name of the database such as MySQL and by the way the terminal monitor supports tab completion or command completion similar to the shell for example, in a separate window in the shell, if we were to type in a command such as PS, we could simply type P and then tab it out, but there are too many commands, so if we do PS and simply tab it out, then the shell completes the command for us, or attempts to complete the command by showing us all the possible options. Let's try it with top, for example, and it's the only command that is exactly named top. Well, similarly, within the MySQL terminal monitor, it supports command tab completion. The terms are being used here interchangeably. And as a result, if there is a unique object such as the name of the database, MySQL, you can feel free to type in the most unique characters of the name of the database after you've specified the command that you're interested in and rely upon MySQL's terminal monitor to complete the tab completion for you. And the same applies to tables as well. Again, we mentioned that the use command is one of the few commands that you can execute without actually terminating with a semicolon, but it really doesn't hurt to use a semicolon. Now that we're inside of the context or within the context of the MySQL database, we can execute show tables. Since we're unable to nest databases, the only next logical set of objects that we can focus on beneath the, the, the database container are tables. And there are many tables defined of which a few are considered to be the grant tables which is where we want to focus our attention. So let's label this section grant tables. Now grant tables are used to provide auth mechanism meaning MySQL relies upon the contents of key tables to determine whether or not to one grant you access to the server and two to grant you access to perform various operations on various databases tables columns and so on Now, MySQL performs authentication in two stages the first stage is to determine whether or not a user at a given host is permitted access to the DBMS what that means is as follows. In a separate shell, you know that we're logged in as a user called LinuxCBT at LinuxCBT DB1, or when we invoke the MySQL client, in all likelihood, it'll submit to the MySQL server LinuxCBT at localhost. The very first stage of authentication performed by MySQL is to 
confirm whether or not this user, the left side of the at symbol, followed by the host, the right side of the at symbol, is permitted access to the database server. That's the very first step. And then password checking takes place. So let's list this as step one. And we'll just put a note. Note MySQL performs two auth steps. One, confirm whether user is permitted to log in to DB MS to the management system not even to the database but just simply whether or not calculate whether or not or determine whether or not the user at a given host is permitted to even talk to the DBMS after that figure out or determine whether or not the passwords correct so step two is confirm password which is stored in an encrypted form in a database which we'll take a look at now all of this takes place based on the MySQL database so note grant tables are stored in system provided MySQL DB and let's take a look grant tables at the actual grant tables grant tables are the following the key grant tables one the user table. Let's identify that table. Let's return to the window where terminal monitor is running and here's a user table. This is a key table. Another key table is the DB table. It lists the databases under management by this instance of MySQL. And another key table is the host table. So let's list those tables. User, host, DB. These are the three key grant tables. But there are also other not so key because they aren't mandatory grant tables and they include the following columns underscore privileges because MySQL supports column level privileges in other words you can set privileges on a per user basis to certain columns so within a given row let's say a row contains three columns you may want to use a Linux CBT to see all three but perhaps the user Linux CBT 2 to see only two of the columns so we can get pretty granular by enabling or disabling access to certain columns and those relationships are maintained in the columns underscore privileges table priv for short or priv and there's also a tables underscore priv or tables underscore priv table which controls or regulates access to tables so just like you can get granular or focus on a column level basis you can focus on a table level basis a database may consist of many tables in this case 17 rows or tables were returned as you can see here but you may want to deny access to certain tables to certain users so via the tables underscore priv table we can determine whether or not a user is granted access to all tables or only a subset of the tables so these are considered tables underscore priv columns underscore priv as well as prox underscore priv to be ancillary grant tables so we'll list or we'll just simply say note ancillary grant tables and these tables are ancillary because they're consulted only when necessary they're not required whereas user host and DB tables are required MySQL needs to know the DBs that are available it needs to know the hosts as well as the users ancillary grant tables include columns underscore priv tables underscore priv as well as prox underscore priv and we'll just confirm that the spelling is all correct prox tables and columns underscore priv there's also help information time information that's not important to what we're doing here now what we want to do is look at the structure of the three key grant tables user hosts and DB in order to see or reveal the structure of any table within MySQL simply execute the describe command this is a SQL command that works pretty much on all SQL compliant DBMS on the market including Oracle Microsoft SQL IBM DB2 and so on so simply execute a describe 
followed by the name of the table. Let's go with the DB table first. In this case, we'll use tab completion. When you use tab completion, if you tab multiple times, the main table is returned, followed by the table and all of its relevant columns. Alter underscore priv, alter underscore routine underscore priv, all the way through db.user. So you should be able to determine, or you should have discerned by now, that standard SQL notation looks like the following. DB name dot table name dot column name should come as no surprise that this is the nomenclature that's in use here. DB followed by table name followed by, in this case, the, the table happens to be called DB and the column happens to be called alter underscore priv. But more on that later. So back to describing the DB. Describe DB followed by a semicolon simply returns the schema or the definition of the DB table. The definition includes the names of the fields, which we saw briefly, and when we use the tab completion, and the type of each column, followed by whether or not null values are permitted, whether or not these are primary keys or even foreign keys, what default values are placed, and any other extra information. So this is the DB description or schema, and if you look at this structure, it should be quite obvious to, as to the type of data that's stored within the DB table. The name of the database, the host, where it runs, any users, select privileges, insert, these are key SQL commands, select, insert, update, delete, whether or not one can create additional columns drop any columns. You can drop columns, tables, and databases. Grant privileges. Who can actually grant privileges or access into the table? References and so on. Many more privileges. No need to enumerate all of them. If we want to see the data that's in some of these fields, simply execute a select. For example, from this particular DB table, so we'll select host comma db comma user the three important and first fields that you see defined from db and you'll see what's defined we have a host with a value of percent percent by the way in SQL notation is the wildcard character which means any so this is similar to asterisk or asterisk dot asterisk so host any host db test user any user this should tell you right away that this particular or these two entries are reserved for the anonymous users. Well, we've gotten rid of the anonymous user, but we didn't clean the values from the DB table. So this is an easy way to permit any host to gain access as an anonymous user to the local system. But access was restricted by the user table anyway because we tried to connect as an anonymous user and it didn't work. Super. So that's a little bit about the DB table. By no means did we cover all of the privileges. You can reference or research the different privileges in the MySQL documentation. There are many, many different privileges which can be assigned. And we look at more privileges later on as we concoct different situations. And also when we look at PHP MyAdmin. But just so that you have an overview of where it's stored, it's stored in the DB table. But there are other tables. Let's execute show tables. DB is simply one of them. There's also host. Let's describe host. Host has similar fields or columns including host, DB, and the different privileges that are permitted. Let's select host, comma, DB from host semicolon and notice it contains no values. It isn't a requirement for the host table to contain values. Let's execute show tables again. But again, there is a table structure configured in the event that we want it to be that granular. Let's look at the user table. The user table is really where the majority of the action is between user and DB. Let's describe user and you're going to see a striking re resemblance to the other two tables both DB and host that they're strikingly similar in terms of the description of the privileges but the user 
table contains slightly different privileges such as who can shut down the server. That's a privilege. You can use the MySQL admin command as we'll show you soon enough to shut the server, but you'll of course need to have the privilege. The user table can be considered to be one of the key tables because in securing access to a DBMS similar to an operating system, the focal point is on securing user access to object access or subject access to object access. The user table manages or keeps track of the different subjects, whereas the DB and host tables keep track of the different objects throughout your system and your network. So we can select host user password from user, which we've done. Let's select host user password. And there's also the shutdown priv that we've mentioned, or the shutdown privilege. Let's double click on that particular privilege as well to see who has that privilege. But it should come as no surprise that the root user has that privilege. And notice that we simply separate the columns that we want using a comma. And if you want to influence the order in which columns are returned, simply adjust the order in which they're return by specifying them in the correct order from left to right. So if you want user first, specify user followed by host. The columns are returned exactly how they are selected. So let's select all this information from the user table followed by a semicolon and there we have host followed by user password shutdown privilege and as you can see the host, local host, the host, Linux CBT DB1 all relate to the local system for the same two users, but these are two distinct users. Just keep that in mind. When you are logged on locally, your system will tend to submit root at localhost, but root at localhost is a totally different user from root at Linux CBT DB1, although they're referencing the same system and we've set the same passwords for both of them. They both, however, have shutdown privileges. Again, MySQL's default behavior is to define a user at the local host as well as a corresponding user at the host name, in this case Linux CBT DB1. So these two users have shutdown privileges on the system. So again, the three, just to recap, grant tables, the three key grant tables include user, host, and DB. The ancillary grant tables include columns privileges, tables privileges, and procs privileges. We focus on user, host, and DB because when connecting to the MySQL DBMS, MySQL, the DBMS engine itself, the main executable MySQL D, performs its authentication logic based on the three key tables, user, host, and DB, to determine whether or not to grant you access to the system. And step one is to determine whether or not the user at a given host is allowed to talk to the server. If the user at a certain host is allowed to talk to the server, then step two, MySQL proceeds with confirming the password before checking you out and giving you access. Next, we're going to create some users and see how the effects are felt across the network when we attempt to, or how they're realized when we attempt to connect.